Hey, 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 welcome to the Chapter 6 Review Packet for Geometry. We'll jump right into the questions here. So starting with number one, it says a basketball player made 36 free throws in 16 games. Find the ratio of free throws to games. So that's what we want to find here. What is the free throws to games ratio? We've got 36 to 16 then. That is a reduced fraction. We always want to reduce these fractions as much as possible. We could divide both of those by 4 and get 9 over 4. So you could write it like this, or you could also write ratios with the colons in there. So this or this is acceptable. I'll put the fraction in the, the blank there. But either one of those would be acceptable. Number two, the ratio of seniors to juniors in the math club is 2 to 3. If there are 21 juniors, how many juniors and seniors are in the math club? So if there's 21 juniors, well, there's 21 juniors. That's how many juniors there's going to be in the math club. But how many seniors in the math club and then really we're saying what's the total of the juniors and seniors that's what we're gonna put on the blank here so the ratio of juniors to seniors two to three and that's juniors on the top seniors or I mean juniors on the bottom seniors on the top so a ratio of seniors to juniors and so we know the juniors would be 21 we don't know this value this is the number of seniors in the math club if we cross multiply that we would have 3x equals 42. You can divide both sides by 3 there. X would equal 14. So you have 14 seniors, 21 juniors. How many juniors and seniors are there? 21 plus 14 is going to be 35. So there's 35 juniors and seniors all together. That is our final answer. 35 we'll put on the blank right there. Solve the proportion here. If you can reduce, you can always do that first. This one I cannot reduce though, so I could just cross multiply from there. I would have 35x equals 55. It's 5 times 11. Divide both sides by 35. And I've got x equals, I could reduce this one. I could divide both of these parts by, by 5 here. And that looks like that would leave me with 11 over 7. 11 sevenths would be an exact final answer. This one looks like another cross multiplication type problem here. So we would have 3 times the quantity of x plus 9 would equal 6x. If I distribute that 3, I've got 3x plus 27. If I subtract 3x from both sides, I'll have 27 equals 3x. And then finally divide by 3, that means x equals 9. Number 5 says if these two are similar shapes that symbol right there means similar so if a b c d is similar to e f g h that means the the letter of the or the order of the letters has to match in that way and it looks like it does because you have one two and three marks on the angles one two and three matches in the same way to find x i know that this one and this one would match up in the same way as this one and this one match up so i could say 28 over x would have to equal 10 over 6.5. This compared to this would be this compared to this. That's one valid way to set this up. There's other valid ways. You just have to make sure you compare matching parts. I could cross multiply from there. 28 times 6.5 is going to be 182. And that's going to equal 10 times x, 10x. If I divide both sides by 10, there's my answer. I'll write this one as a, a decimal, and the 10 is gone, so this just equals x right there. Continuing on to number 6 then, find the value of x and y. Be careful on these ones that you compare the matching parts. Make sure you identify how the triangles are similar first. So in red, I'll add some extra stuff in the picture here. If these two are touching like this, make two straight lines like that, these are vertical angles. Those would have to be congruent. Here you have parallel and parallel right there and there. So that means this angle and this angle being alternate interior angles would have to be congruent. And likewise, this one and this one. So x does not actually match up with 10. You would have a wrong answer if you tried to match up x and 10. x actually matches up with 15 because you have a 1, 2, 3 matching up with 1, 2, 3 like that. So these two match in the same way that these two match 
and also in the same way that these two match. So those are the matching up parts there. As long as you compare matching parts, you're going to be good to go. I could say x over 15, this one compared to this one, would have to equal, that was the bigger triangle compared to the smaller one, so the bigger triangle compared to the smaller one there. I could reduce that to 13 and 5 if I wanted to right away. And if I cross multiply that from there, it looks like it will have 15 times 13 and 5 times x. So 15 times 13, let's see what that would be. That'd be, oh, we'd have 10 times 15 would be 150, and then another 3 times 15, 45. So 195. And I could divide both sides by, by 5 from there. And that would be x equals 39, it looks like. No units given, so I can leave that off. And then for y, I could do the same thing. I can compare 26 to 10, and that matches up with y to 6. If I want to reduce first, I can do that once again. This would be 13 and 5. Cross multiply. 13 times 6, that would be, that'd be 60 plus 18, 78 would equal 5y. I can divide both sides by 5. And it looks like y then would equal 15.6 if you're going to use a decimal for that answer. If you didn't use a decimal, that would be 15 and 3 fifths. We would have that instead. So let's put that up here. x is 39, y 15.6. Number seven, first you have to figure out if they are in fact similar, and it looks like they are. By angle, angle, you have this angle and this angle being congruent. They both share this small triangle and this bigger triangle both share this angle in common. So I'll, I'll say these are similar triangles by angle, angle. Since I know they're similar, then I can compare the matching parts. So I've got six and eight. Those are going to be, well, that's not matching up parts there. 6 is matching up with the whole thing here in this bigger triangle. 6 is going to match up with 16, 6 plus 10 right there. So 6 and 16 match up in the same way that 8 and y match up. These are the, the lengths here and here. And then that matches up in the same way that x does with the whole thing from here to here, x plus 15 would be the whole thing from there to there. So these are valid ways to compare these sides here. So let's do, well, let's go with the x first. So this is one valid way. I could set this up. I could say x over x plus 15 would equal, so the small triangle compared to the big triangle would have to equal the small triangle compared to the big triangle over here. That'd be 6 over 16. Again, you can reduce first if you want to. That'd be saving you some time later by doing that. And it looks like 8 times x then would be 3 times x plus 15. You can distribute that 3. That gives you that. Subtract a 3x. That gives you this. And then divide by 5. And you've got x equals 9. And for the the blue part there, we've got I could do six over sixteen again. That would have to equal, so I did small to the big whole thing there, would have to equal eight compared to y. If I cross multiply that, I could again reduce first if I wanted to. It'd be three and eight. This would be three y equals sixty-four. Divide by three, and that would be y is twenty-one and a third or 21.3 repeating. One of those things would be, either one would be acceptable. You could even leave it as 64 over 3. I'll use 21 and 1 third here for my answer. Number 8. Determine whether the pair of triangles is similar. If so, write a similarity statement and justify your answer. So, in other words, show your work here. Justify your answer. If they're going to be similar, it's going to be ha have to be in this way. Smallest to smallest is going to have to equal or be proportional in the same way as the medium is to the medium here and the big 
compared to the big. So you got to compare the, the matching of sides. Let's see what all those fractions equal. 5 over 10, that's 1 half. 8 over 16, also 1 half. This is looking good. They all have to equal the same thing in the end. But if you do 10 over 20, you've got it. Yes, they are all proportional. They all equal the same thing here. So yes, based on this, you can say yes, they're similar by. And if you wanted to say what the, the theorem or postulate was, that would be by side, side, side similarity. And writing a similarity statement, you could say triangle ABC would be similar to A, B to C matches up in the same way as X, Y, and Z. Let's check out number nine together. So, and 10, determine whether each pair of triangles is similar. If so, write a similarity statement and justify your answer once again. So it looks like we have parallel lines right here. That means corresponding angles here and here would have to be congruent to each other. You could also even have the third angle right here. They share that angle in common. The reflexive, reflexive property will tell you that the angle is the same in both there, but you really only need two. So this one, are they similar? Yes, by angle, angle, similarity we could say that they are similar and we're supposed to write a similarity statement to do that we would need to have actual letters written in there so let me write some letters in there and I'll use if you're one of my geometry students the answer key that you might have seen posted in class used these letters so I'll use these same letters so you could tr say triangle LST would be similar to L to S to T would be similar to L to K to M. That has to match up in that same way. This other one, you just have information about one of the angles in each triangle. You need at least two of the angles, or you need all the sides being proportional. There's nothing here in the pictures that gives information about the sides, saying anything's congruent or proportional. Therefore, this one, you don't have enough information. So we'll say, is there enough information? No, not enough info, and I'll just leave it like that. So there's not enough info to know if they're similar or not. They might be, but we don't have enough information to say for sure one way or the other. Number 11, find the length of the missing segments. So let's talk about how I think the easiest way to solve this one would be. So you've got three different triangles here. You've got a small one, you've got a medium one, and you've got a large one right there. I'm going to to draw those three triangles in separately. Since these are all parallel lines, we know parts have to match up in a corresponding way. We're going to have proportions that we can set up, in other words. So not my best picture there, uh, but pretend this one is this triangle right here, this medium one is this triangle right here, and the large one is this one right here. And let's figure out what we know in, in these triangles. So I'll say that we've got 10, why don't I go with red for this first one. So this is 10, 4, and 12. And I don't know what A is yet. And I don't know what B is up here. I don't know what C or D are up there. Uh, so but let's figure out what I can say from here. So I know that 10 matches up with A in the same way that 12 matches up with 6. This is a part of a triangle to this part of the triangle here that would match up in the same way as this part to this part here. So that's a valid way to set up a proportion for A to solve for A. So A over 10 would equal 6 over 12. You could reduce that first, make that 1 half. That makes the answer easier to get to. 2A equals 10 divided by 2. A would equal 5 right there. So if that's true, I'm going to write that in. A equals 5. That would tell me that this whole length from here to here, that whole length would be 10 plus 5. That's just 15 right there. So this smaller, or this medium triangle, I know the whole length is 15 right there. I know this whole side would be 12 plus 6. That's 18. And this one is C. I'm trying to figure that out eventually. So now I could figure out C based on that. I could set up proportions comparing these two triangles. So I could say 
for instance, 10 over 15 matches up in the same way. And then to, to get C, I would want to do 4 compared to C. So I did small to big triangle. There's another small to big triangle. Reduce that. First makes it easier, 2C. Then after you cross multiply, it would equal 12. That means C would equal 6. So if I know that's 6 right there, I'll write that in. And I know this is 6 right here. This is 5. This is 10. So for the whole side there, 6 plus 5 plus 10, that would have to be 21. And D, I don't know what that is yet. Uh, C, I figured that out. B, I'm not sure what that is here. So that's B right there. I don't know this whole side, but I have enough information now to set up a valid proportion to solve for B. I could say 10 over 21. 10 over 21 would have to equal 4 over B. Those things match up in the same way. Cross multiply. There's no reducing that's possible there to start, but that would be that. And dividing by 10 would leave you with B equals 8.4. A lot of students have tried to do something like this in the past and say b over 6 would equal 4 over 10. Here you're compa comparing the whole length to the whole length of this smaller triangle and then you're comparing a whole length to just a part of a length in the bigger triangle if you do that. That's not going to be a valid proportion if you do that. So you have to think with b and c at least you have to think about the whole triangles what are the whole parts and how do those whole parts match up for D this one you could compare this part to this part it would equal this part to this part so we have a part to a part and then the whole to the whole here and here you just can't compare part to a whole and then a whole to a whole something like that would not work so here we could say D over 6 this part compared to this part has to be proportional in the same way as this whole is proportional to this whole of the smaller triangle. So 12 over 10. Reduce that first if you want to, makes it easier. This would be 5D equals 36 divided by 5. And 36 divided by 5, that'd be 7.2, or 7 and 1 fifth. Let's move on from there. Number 12. This one we're going to use the mid segment theorem. So we have mid segments here. Find the perimeter of XYZ. What's the perimeter of this triangle? If Z is the midpoint of AB, so that means that this would be true. This and this would be congruent. Y is a midpoint of AC. That means this would be true. These two congruent. And X is a midpoint of BC. So these two are also congruent. AB equals 16. The whole thing is 16 in other words. AC, the whole thing is 30. And BC, the whole thing is 28. And the mid segment theorem said that if you have a mid segment, which this is a mid segment because it connects two midpoints of the triangle, that length from here to here, from Y to Z, why don't I draw that here in a highlighter? So this length right here, from there to there, is going to be half of this length right here. So what's half of 28? That's going to be 14 right there. So this one has to be 14. Same thing works for this side. Half of 30 is 15. And again for this side, half of 16 is 8. So the perimeter of triangle XYZ is simply those three numbers added together. 8 plus 14 plus 15. That's 22 plus 15, which is 37. Number 13 says that you have two similar triangles. Let's draw two triangles in. I'll just do a rough sketch here, but I'll go blue and green. Uh, which one is bigger? I'm not really sure. So this is definitely not to scale, but I'll just draw two similar looking triangles. So we'll say those are our two similar triangles. This one might actually be bigger than this one. We'll figure that out though as we go. ABD is similar to EFH. So I'm going to order those in 
a matching up way then. AC is the median of ABD. If it's a median, that means it's going to connect A to the midpoint of BD, and that point would have to be C since it's AC. If it's a median, that's congruent to that. It's the midpoint right there. EG is a median of EFH. That means this would be point G, and that would be the midpoint of that side. EG is a median, if that's the case. AC is 20. BC is 8. FH, the whole thing from here to here, is x minus 3. And EG is x. So it looks like we could set up some proportions since they're similar to each other. If I know that this is x minus 3, the whole thing, I could compare that to the whole thing over here. If this is 8, that has to be 8, making the whole thing 16. So a valid proportion that we could set up on this one would look like this. You could say 20 matches up with x in the same way that 16 matches up with x minus 3. Sorry about that, 16, there we go, and x minus 3. You can solve that from there. 4x. So 20 times the quantity of x minus 3 equals 16x. This would be 20x minus 60 equals 16x. Subtract 16x, that's 4x. Add 60, that's 60 on this side. Then divide by 4, you'd have x equals 15. Not a final answer because it says to find gh. So if 15 is x, that means the whole thing is 12 and that makes this 6 and this 6. So you could say gh then equals 6. That's just 12 divided by 2. Number 14, RTS is similar to EGF. So we'll, let's draw some similar triangles again. I'll go blue and green. Not exactly sure how they look to start. Was that other one actually bigger? So this was actually going to be the smaller one. It looks bigger, but it would be smaller had it been drawn to scale. On this one, I'm not sure which one's bigger than which, so I'm just going to, to draw them like that, and we'll just trust the information, not the, the way the picture looks. It says SA is altitude. If you went R, let's go RTS like this. If it's an altitude, it's going to connect the opposite side in a perpendicular way. So likewise, altitude of RTS, FB is altitude of EGF, and RTS matched up with EGF in the same way, in a matching way, so that would have to be EGF. FB would be that part right there. So this would be B, and this would be A down there, the arts. Uh, nothing, I don't see anything that you can spell in that other one. If RS is 30, SA is 2x plus 5, right there, 2x plus 5. EF is 25. And FB is x plus 10. We're going to try to find SA. What is the length of SA? So it looks like this one's a pretty easy proportion to set up. 30 matches up with 25 in the same way that 2x plus 5 matches up with x plus 10. To make life easier on ourselves, let's reduce this first. That'd be 6 over 5. And then you can cross multiply from there. So I'd have 6 times x plus 10 equals 5 times 2x plus 5. That's 6x plus 60 equals 10x plus 25. Subtract 6x from both sides and subtract 25 from both sides, you'd have 4x equals 35. And that means that x would be 35 divided by 4, and that would be 8 and 3 quarters, or 8.75. That's your value for x. So you're going to take that to find sa. you got to plug that value in 4x. So 2x plus 5 becomes 2 times 8.75 plus 5. That would be, looks like 16, and then an extra 1.5, so 17.5, 17.5 plus 5, 
that's going to be 22.5. Final answer right there for SA. Number 15, 16, 17, and 18, we're supposed to draw an altitude, median, perpendicular bisector, and an angle bisector on the triangles provided. So I'm just going to do a sketch on this. If I said to, to be precise, we'd want to be more precise with this, but an altitude has to be at a 90 degree angle. I'll use my straight line tools for this. So if it doesn't look like it's at a 90 degree angle, that is not correct. So here, that's not 90 degrees. That angle right there would not be 90. So we would want to make sure that that angle is 90. You could use a protractor to, to verify that for sure. Um, but right there would be a 90 degree angle. If it's an altitude, you have to have a 90 degree angle there. I'm trying to make a nice box. It's not working out so well. That's a little better. There we go. Median connects the midpoints. So if you're going to find the midpoint, if I were to connect this point to the midpoint of this side, it looks like it would be right about there. And you would say that this is congruent to that. If that was the case, that would have to be a median of that triangle. A perpendicular bisector is both perpendicular to a side and splits the side in half. So if I were to find the perpendicular bisector of this side, I could do something like this. And I would say that this would be congruent to that. And you'd have a box in the corner here as well. You would want to measure that to make sure. Um, but for right now, I'm just eyeballing it and giving you the, the rough idea. So that would be a perpendicular bisector. That line cuts that segment in half and is also perpendicular to that segment. An angle bisector, we would want to measure that angle and make sure that whatever side we're drawing actually cuts that angle in half. It looks like that would right there. Because it's an angle bisector does not mean that this is congruent to that. It just means that the angles themselves up here are congruent to one another. So this angle is congruent to that angle. Number 19 in triangle pig, <laughs> PL is an altitude. Okay, PL is an altitude means that I could add this in the picture. It's perpendicular right there. And it says PU is a median. PU. <laughs> so IU is congruent to UG. That length has to be the same as that length. And if IU from here to here is 2x plus 6, GU from there to there is 6x minus 10. Pretty simple problem, I think, if you just recognize that hey, you know what? These were congruent, right? So that means that these two have to be equal to each other. So we would have 2x plus 6 would equal 6x minus 10. Subtract 2x from both sides, you'd have 4x. Add 10 to both sides, you'd have 16. Divide by 4, there's your answer. x equals 4, at least for what x is. Finding ig, though, would be a matter of taking 2x plus 6 and adding that to 6x minus 10 and plugging in 4 for x. Or you could find, since it's a median, you could find either one of these and multiply it by 2. That's another way to do that. But ig would have to be, let's do the first way I talked about, 2 times 4 plus 6. That's i to u. And then u to g would be another 6 times 4 minus 10. That would be 8 plus 6, 14. That would be 24 minus 10, another 14. And that's good. They should match up. They should be the same since they were congruent to one another. And then that would equal 28 from there. And then finally, number 20. Number 20 says we got pig again. PL is an altitude. PU is a median. So same thing here again, there and there. That's congruent. IU is congruent to UG. And this is a 90 degree angle. If PI is 3x plus 17, and the measure of PLG, P to L to G, is going to be 12x plus 18. You'd have that many degrees. If that's 90, that one also has to be 90. So there's no way to find out x based on this side length, but it's easy to find x knowing that that's 90 degrees right there. You could say 12x plus 18 equals 90. Subtract 18, got 72, divide by 12, and you've got x equals 6. So that, if we're going to try to find pi, pi, plug that in right here to figure out what pi is. So pi 
is 3 times 6 plus 17. That's 18 plus 17. So PI is 35. And that, my friends, does that, does it for the review packet here. Uh, it finishes that problem up. We are all done with the review packet. Go back and review, rewind, and refresh as needed. Hope you found that helpful. Hope you do well on the test. If you are in my class, make sure you're ready for the test coming up on this review or on these types of problems. Let me know in class if you had any questions. If you saw any mistakes, please comment and let me know where you saw the mistake. Hope you do really well. Hopefully you found that helpful, and I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you later for our next lesson.